What is happening maestros? Welcome back to another flexibility video. So today I wanted to show you a quick and easy stretch for the quadratus lumborum. That is a must try if you are dealing with low back pain. A lot of you may not know this about me, but before I got into flexibility training, I was actually dealing with chronic back pain for a pretty long time. And so what I discovered in my quest to solve my back pain once and for all was that my QLs and my obliques were extremely tight and very weak. I had never trained lateral flexion before. I didn't even know what that was or how to train it. And by the way, lateral flexion is just a fancy name for side bending. Now the quadratus lumborum is a stabilizer muscle located in the lower back and it connects the pelvis, ribs, and spine together. As soon as I started stretching and training this stubborn little muscle, I actually started to get some relief from my back pain very, very quickly. That's when I first made the connection between my back pain and my tight, weak QLs. Since then, in my recent years of coaching experience, I have noticed a strong correlation between the two. Most of the people I've worked with that are dealing with back pain also have really tight, jacked up QLs. So with that being the case, it seems as though training the QLs through lateral flexion is the lowest hanging fruit that we can use as an entry point for actually opening up the low back. The safest and easiest place to start is going to be with this dynamic QL stretch that I'm about to show you. So to set this exercise up, all that we're going to need is a bench, a chair, a bed, really anything that is going to be elevated off the floor that will support your body weight. So using my trusty little bench here to demonstrate, we're gonna take our hand, place it on the support. We're gonna take our opposite leg, have a step away from that support. And the leg that is closest to our support, we're gonna take that and thread it through the opposite side so that we have a position that kind of resembles something like this. From here, you can use the other hand if you need to. We're gonna to want to come down onto our elbow for support. And the main thing that we really just wanna focus on in terms of positioning is maintaining a nice alignment between our extended foot here and the hips. We don't want it too far in front or too far behind. You wanna keep it approximate, your foot approximately in line with the hips. From here, you can place your opposite hand on your supporting leg for some additional support. You can adjust this leg positioning if you need to. And all we're looking to do here to find this stretch is sink our hip down towards the floor. Go as deep as you comfortably can. We're gonna hold that stretch for three to five seconds every rep. And then we're gonna come back out of it and just move in and out of this stretch dynamically for reps, going as deep as you can, aiming to try and work your way deeper into the position over the course of every set holding for three to five seconds at the bottom of the stretch. And what we really wanna focus on here is keeping a nice upright and open chest. So what we wanna avoid is leaning forwards, having our chest coming and facing down towards the ground, or kind of just like not actually pushing into the QL and the obliques. So that's why we wanna keep our chest as upright as possible really drive the hip down towards the floor and lean into the obliques as much as we possibly can and then come back up. And when we're coming back up out of that bottom position, you want to try and use your supporting leg as little as possible. The thing that you want to think about, the intention to have, is actually pushing your back foot into the floor and using your obliques to crunch and contract and flex to pull you out of that position. And this is really gonna give you the optimal stimulus for the quadratus lumborum, the obliques, the TFL, your hip abductors, all in that lengthened position. And of course you can use your supporting leg as much as you need to, but we wanna try and apply that intention of flexing against the stretch to pull ourselves out of the end range. And once you get fairly proficient in this exercise and you're able to dominate your body weight through a full range of motion, we can then look to progressively overload over time using additional weight to take that stimulus to the next level. 
Now this is the type of stretch that I would recommend doing more frequently. So for example, you can do one larger set of repetitions on a daily basis, or you can do three moderate sets multiple times per week, for example, like every other day. It can also easily be integrated into your warmups for your training sessions, or even be used as an accessory exercise to pair with some of your upper body movements. The most important thing is to just make sure that you're starting out appropriately for your own current level of ability, whatever that looks like for you right now. Then over time, we can apply the principle of progressive overload just like we would with any other exercise. And as your trunk starts to get stronger and more flexible, you'll want to adjust the intensity to reflect the progress you've made. Now, one little caveat I should add to this video is that back pain can be very multifactorial. So this exercise may not get rid of your back pain entirely, but at the very least, it will let you know if your quadratus lumborum is contributing to the problem based on how the exercise feels. Some other things to consider when it comes to dealing with back pain are your strength and flexibility in spinal flexion, extension, and rotation. It's important to train all the different ranges of motion that your spine is meant to move in, especially if you struggle with back pain. On top of that, you'll also want to consider your hip mobility as well. If your hips are very restricted in their movement, it can create all sorts of compensations and imbalances that can place additional stress on the low back. So I hope this information serves you as well as it has served me. If you did find this video helpful, please hit that like button to let me know. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the comment section down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're looking for more flexibility content just like this. I'll see you in the next one, maestros.